so we are at the top of the hour. First off, as people are rolling in, I want to say thank you for joining us today. We're really, really excited. We had hundreds of registrants for this particular webinar. We Sorry. call it cold call, or we call we called it call it a comeback. The phone <laughs> is the way in 2024. We call all, all in a comeback. Webinars. Yeah, we call all these webinars bold calling. Uh, my name is Adam Sokol. I'm our content marketing lead here at Orem. I'm joined by Colin Spector, who is our VP of Sales. And Pete, who is basically known for all things, he's he's with Atrium, but uh, I think you know him from internet is a nice way of, of saying internet. That. Modern sales. Know? Yeah. I mean, I can give a quick introduction of myself. My name yeah, is Pete Kazianja. I'm one of the founders of Atrium. We make sales performance management software. Um, I also started um, founding, excuse me, founding sales, modern sales pros, which is the, uh, you know, the nation's largest sales operations and leadership community. And that's where I've, I've met a lot of folks from it's a 40,000 person sales operation, the sales management, sales leadership community. Um, but I'm also just like a huge Orem Homer, right? <laughs> um, in like a very meaningful way. Um, a, because I like, I mean, I like cool software that allows you to do cool things. But I also like software that helps people be like better and like actualize better and like kind of change the way that organizations work and make the people better. And that, and that's why, you know, when when I heard about this the topic here today, I was really excited to to talk about it because I think that, you know, facilitating a calling culture, like yeah, it's great. It generates pipe, which which of course is true and really important. But it also has like second order effect, second and third order effects that people don't really consider as much. And and that's what I'm excited to talk about t today with everybody. Yeah, and uh, so for if people have attended some of our webinars before with with Colin and some other Oramites and some other people, you know, building a calling culture is a, a huge thing for us. And and we're gonna share a bunch of stats and really interesting kind of tidbits that I'm gonna have these two experts talk about in, in more detail and give some live reactions to, but I, I want to start actually with Pete because this whole conversation started about the, with the fact that last year Orm released this state of sales development report that we did, this blind survey where it basically showed that the majority of all pipeline is coming from the phones and it's only expected to grow in 2024 and beyond. But what Pete and I were talking about uh, in a, a conversation uh, about a month ago was the fact that we've arrived at this moment where the phone is the absolute best way to connect with prospects, but there's a ton of salespeople who have zero experience with the phone. So can you kind of bring people up to this moment and kind of talk about what we were discussing just so we can kind of paint the picture as to why we're talking about the importance of creating a calling <laughs> culture? Totally, totally. Here, I mean, I guess I'm like a little bit of like a sales tech historian. Some, someone, it's kind of like, come sit beside me by the fire, right? I, and I think one thing that you really have to appreciate is um, like the technologies that we use to do our jobs kind of changes, not only changes how we do our jobs, but also changes like, like who we are. If we will, like a good example of this is like, I'm this like awful like infovore, right? So I'm like a Twitter like addict, right? And so like, I'm sure it's definitely has like eroded my attention span. Like, let's, let's, be, let's be honest, right? And so a great example of this would be, you know, about a decade ago, this like new sales engagement software came around, right? Like the outreaches of the world, the sales lofts of the world. Kind of prior to that, you had like Yesware, which allows you to send like instrumented email, like, oh, look at this. I can get like open tracking and click tracking or whatever. But like you were still sending things manually. Um, and then um, and then you had Tout app was like, those are kind of the two, the two folks. And then if you ever wanted to do like scalable, like if you ever wanted to do scaled email, that was really like the realm of like marketing operations. Like I remember like way back in the day when I was a baby product marketing manager and product manager at VMware, like we had Eloqua. Right. And it was like an act of Congress to get any sort of like email sent to any sort of like slice of our audience. And so then what like I think the key insight was that like, you know, the outreach and then sales loft and kind of some other folks as well realized that like we were all sitting on these outboxes. Right. Like every single one of us had our Gmail outbox or our Office 365 outbox, or whatever. And if they could provide if they could provide some sort of automation that allowed like you know, a mere mortal, like an SDR or an AE or whatever to, you know, maybe not send a million emails, but send like a hundred a day or 200 a day or whatever using this outbox that seemed like it could be like really powerful. 
and 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 like at the time when like that first release it was like hella powerful <laughs> it was insane right like all of a sudden it was just like holy mackerel this is like you know steroids or like you know it's like it's like a connecticut yankee in king arthur's court it's like all of a sudden you have somebody who's like showing up from the future with this insane technology and and so i think what ended up happening in like the second half the second half of the 20 teens right 2015 2016 2017 2018 2019 was like you know the the outreaches in the sales office world have really started to penetrate the market and like yeah it worked great right like because inboxes looked a certain like your prospect inboxes looked a certain way prior to that but then as like those guys were kind of victims of their own success because then as soon as like you know the inboxes of of any sort of buyer, whether you're talking about a, like a chief information security officer or a VP of sales operations or like, you know, VP of sales, like poor Colin, like we all know like what our inboxes look like if you have a buyer title, right? And, 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 and so I think, but like, it was one of those things where like, A, it made sense for everyone to adopt that. But then the other thing too, is that it didn't, so as a result, like now you could send way more emails, right? But and what you were probably doing was as an SDR or like a seller, you're probably spending most of your time like dealing with replies, right? Like synch- like asynchronous replies, like someone re- responds back and they're like, hey, yeah, like I'm interested or like, you know, so you start doing this like objection handling thing or like whatever, but you're doing it like asynchronously or like micro async, if you will, which is like very different than like selling, Right, like having a live discovery conversation. And so what you have here is it's like, I don't know, it's like, um, you know, the joke that people talk about, about like iPad kids, right? Like kind of being raised by the, raised by the iPad or whatever. Like what you have here is you have sellers who are raised by outreach and raised by sales loft. And if you think about it, like, they never really had the moment of like doing lots of dials, having to do live conversation, live objection handling, thinking about like, you know, being succinct, thinking about what that person was thinking. Who am I talking to? What are their pain points? Oh, they object to me and I have to like react real time. Um, and and I think a secondary component of this is like the the, the kind of age of the, the, the folks who are kind of coming up in this era also were coming up in the era of the iPhone as well, where a lot of their social interactions, like in high school, whatever, were intermediated via iMessage or Snapchat or whatever. So essentially what you have is a lot of people who are really used to async conversation, which is cool. Async is like, has its place. It's just very different than synchronous. Um, and it's like less, it's like less high bandwidth, et cetera. And so like, that's kind of how we got to the current state. So it kind of makes sense that you would have a bunch of SDRs and maybe even AEs that are like phone shy, right? For, for these reasons, but that doesn't mean that's a good way of being as a seller. And so like, that's kind of how we got to that. And I've, I've been thinking about, and this is like one of the reasons why I'm such a big fan of Orm, because not only is it effective because then you can like get into people's, actually get on the, get into their phone. But then also like when we implemented Orm at Atrium, I think we had like three SDRs or whatever. We're pretty like, you know, fairly small sales organization. Our SDRs went from having like, a connector to a day to having like 20 connects a day, which then now you're like doing push-ups, right? And they're getting really good at th- those synchronous conversations because it's like a trial by fire. And and so I think that that's one thing that folks really need to appreciate is like you have this, this like cohort of folks in the industry who like were raised by outreach and raised by sales loft and raised by iMessage and and like they like they they have um you know muscle debt if you will or like skill debt that we need to that we need to clean up in order to get them to be successful sellers. Helen, I want to I want to get you get your hand on the ball on this because obviously selling Orum when you especially you as a VP of sales like when you get involved in a conversation it's probably pretty clear that the at least from the top of the organization like they have an interest in selling and so I'm super interested to hear like how often are you having conversations with team leaders, managers, decision makers who are saying like, yeah, our, our outbound team, they have zero experience. Like how kind of rampant is this thought that like, oh, we have not, we don't have anybody here who's good on the phone at all. Look, it, it, it certainly exists. Um, mm-hmm. I, I would say it's getting better. It feels like it's starting to turn back towards yeah. people putting a, a, a focus on training and enablement and readiness for your team to talk live with your market, right? Like 
yep. Pete, Pete's point, like there's been this whole deficit of sales professionals just who kind of lacked enablement for phone based live communication, having a live conversation, like, like Pete was saying, like thinking quick on your feet, knowing how to handle objections, getting really tight with your script and your differentiation. And, uh, and, and so there was definitely a period of time where, uh, I would say when Orem first came out, we were evangelizing, getting people back on the phone, period. And we're like, Hey, like, (laughs) it's okay. They want to hear from you. The phone was like considered the backwater of of prospecting when when we first launched. People were like the phone. Like, why are people building a dialer like that? Isn't that what? the phone dead? And, and so, what's amazing is <clears throat> the phone is back in vogue. Like, it's you know, it, it, it's it's clear as day that you know the phone is back in vogue. We we've seen this chasm, this 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 chasm crossing of the phone being top of mind for. Uh, all kinds of sales tech, tech companies and sales floors everywhere. And folks are trying to figure out how to get back on the phone. How can I enable my people to get back on the phone? And I want to get back on the phone, but I want to do it as effectively and efficiently as I got my email strategy in the past with you know the sales engagement platforms. And so we're really excited to get to, uh, to offer a great pathway for folks to get back on the phone and make it fun and engaging and effective. So um yeah i mean it's it, it you know we we in our discovery we meet people where they are and part of that is figuring out do you guys already have a like what's the calling culture like today are your reps already ready for the phone like are they operationally is your business operationally ready for a, a phone platform today do you have your scripts are reps trained for objections and so in some in some deal cycles some cases we might need to at, offer enablement there first and just get mm-hmm. some basic building blocks first before we can uh, even implement uh, the platform. So it really, really yeah. depends on where folks are at. I, I think one of the things that like, again, like I, I oftentimes because like I'm old and busted, people are like, oh, okay, whatever boomer, like, you know, of course you're grumpy about X, Y, Z because <clears throat> the, you know, you're like, this is just different. Like we should be doing social selling on, on LinkedIn, building personal brands or whatever. Um, and I think an important thing to say is like, look, it's not that there was anything wrong with email, right? It was just, it was a channel that was like an exploit for a moment in time when mm-hmm. all of a sudden, like there was a key enabling technology like outreach and then sales loft and some of the others it was like hey like there's this outbox sitting here they can send 200 emails a day and there's and there's Colin's inbox which is just barren it just wants some emails man it just wants some emails right and so it made a lot of sense to do it and like it was a rational thing to do <clears throat> from a go to market standpoint to do that to lean into that because Colin's inbox was empty right the 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 prospects inbox was empty and you could automate these these outbound right like i actually talk about this in the book i wrote on on early stage sales so founding sales is like like oh my gosh it's magical you can send the first email and then you can send a reply to it and it kind of looks like you're actually following up and then exactly. and then people actually and then people actually get up get back to you on the fourth reply which guess what you didn't have to spend any time to do that was totally the case in 2016 and 2017 and 2018, right? And that is not the case in 2022 because Outreach and Sales have done such a good job and, and Groove and blah, 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 have done such a good job of deploying that Collins Inbox does not look barren anymore, right? So so like the, the value calculus has changed where it's like, oh, it used to be like, here's this highly automated thing where I could do a lot of activity that was high conversion because Colin's inbox was empty. And like now that value calculus has changed. And so in contrast, back then it was like, oh, well, like we know that calling is good, right? But man, oh man, you have to dial and then ring, 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 ring. And then it goes to voicemail, whatever. Cool, you do a hundred dials a day or whatever. You're still like, you know, the conversion rates that like conversation rate is low. And so like the key thing that like Orem's insight was like, actually, if most of these go to voicemail anyway, right? Well, then we can just parallel dial these guys. And like, it's not, and like nobody's the wiser, right? It's not a problem. The prospect doesn't care because like they're in a meeting, so they're ignoring it anyway, right? So, but rather than the SDR, the AE having to sit there listening to the dial tone coming back to them, (laughs) 
right? There's like three of those dials happening. And as soon as someone picks up, boom, now I'm talking to the, to the person. So it changed the automation calculus. Whereas now the cost, the human time cost associated with calling had now decreased by, you know, a third, right? Or a quarter or, or, or what have you. And I think that that's like, so I, th- I just want to make sure that like people don't hear me saying like, oh yeah, everyone like, you know, relied on email because like they're afraid of the phone or whatever. It's like, no, no, no. It made sense to do it. It's just that the calculus has changed. And then there were other things as well that Colin was noting, like, you know, three or four years ago, um, you know, database availability on cell phone numbers wasn't as awesome as it is now. Well, it's kind of like a chicken and an egg sort of situation. It's like, well, if nobody's calling because everyone's using outreach and sales loft, then like, why do we need to like even collect cell phone numbers, right? And so like now what, you ha- what you've had over the last like two or three or four years, those numbers have started to become available in these databases, like in Apollo, in Zoom Info, in, I forget what the one, uh, like, oh, sorry, in Orem, in Modigi, et cetera, et cetera, because now people are capturing that out of like email signatures, putting into their CRM, which then goes into the data union, et cetera, et cetera. So like the, the calculus has now changed such that it now makes sense to, to like, because Colin, its inbox is overflowing and because you can automate like the efficiency of parallel dialing mm-hmm. and because the phone numbers are now available, it makes sense to, to now to now do this, right? And it has all sorts of secondary benefits too in terms of like conversion and training for, you know, for folks who eventually become customer facing. Mm-hmm. You nailed it. it. Yeah, it helps, helps you get ready for, for customer facing. There's, especially if you're, if it's an, if you're an entry level sales position, getting those at bats, right? Getting those opportunities to speak live with a prospective customer and start to practice the the conviction and emoting of uh, of what you represent and navigate objections and think on your feet. That all lends itself to when you become a, a closer, when you become account executive or client success totally. manager. And you know, and and so I, the best SDRs uh, or the best kind of the best account executives were former SDRs for us, folks that had tons of experience talking live to people. And some of the best SDRs, you think about it, they're folks that had lots of human to human uh, interactions yeah. before becoming SDR. They could be from service businesses or yep. um, or even other kind of door-to-door sales or, or other industries like that, um, navigating different personalities and different conversations. And so um, you got to learn, you know, to be kind of cosmopolitan with your communication in that way. And the phone is the most effective way to do that today. So. Yeah, I, I think like the no, we, we need to come up with like a, we can we can get Ting Ting to do this like uh, um, we need to come up with like like sync right like synchronous like sync is sync like sync is awesome right like mm-hmm. sync is sync is the new black right um, don't call it a comeback synchronous communication is the new black sync and I think the reason that. yeah like so I hope nobody here follows me on Twitter because Jesus that'd be too awful for them but like. Anyone who follows me on Twitter knows that I like I am not a big fan of Slack, um, and the reason why I'm not a big fan of Slack is because what it does is it induces people to engage in synch- uh, sorry asynchronous conversation when they could be having synchronous conversation. And synchronous conversation, as we're seeing right here, is just such higher bandwidth. And you see this with pro- so like you think about it internally, where you've had like an email back and forth or a Slack back and forth. It was just like a misunderstanding. It's like, Jesus guys, like y'all just need to get on a call, right? Just like <laughs> huddle, huddle that person. And it's the same sort of situation. Like, I think we've all, like anyone who's been a seller, right? Has had a situation where they're going back and forth with a prospect or whatever. And, and like, there's a bunch of like erroneous assumptions that are happening on that, on, on the, on the prospect side, right? Mm-hmm. And the seller is not necessarily understanding the full story. And you're like in your you're essentially like mailing like letters in a bottle back and forth digitally. And then like you hop on a call and 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 it's just like you instant like you solve it like rapidly. Yeah. Not just because of like, you know, the ability to like, oh, okay, cool. It's like calling, you know, good rapport, et cetera. But also just like the actual information transfer that's happening here. And like I understand where they're like they're able to express things more quickly, like they don't have to like form their thoughts and then type it, right? Like there's not like a loss like between their head and their fingers and then like, et cetera, et cetera. Like we're just, you know, like having a live conversation 
like over a fire as cave people, right? Versus sending letters, which we've been doing for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years, right? right? right. Versus like sending letters in a bottle, and um, and and like and that's what's missed when you when you rely on on asynchronous conversation, and that's like you know whether that's prospecting, right? Um, or or even like and like. You know, even mid funnel, which of course like is less pertinent from a parallel dialing standpoint. But I find myself doing this with my sellers all the time. I'm like, I'm like, boys, ladies, like, call them. <laughs> Look at the email signature. There's a cell phone right there. Call them. They're not going to yell at you. Like, just call them. Yeah, just just call them. Like, let's 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 hash this out. And then the more that you can bring that up the funnel, like, the better off you are because like someone doesn't have to read your letter in the bottle. Like you're talking to them, right? And like you're like the, the 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 efficiency with which you're going to like change their brain to understand the value proposition of like what it is that you do and the fact that they have this problem is just so much more rapid than them like giving yes. them a homework assignment of like here's this here's this email you should have to read like go for it. Well, I, I want to so I want to ask you guys about like some tactical and practical things, and I'm then I'm gonna show some stats that I don't even know if Pete has seen. He might be looking at these first time when I bring it when I share my screen. But before we get to that, I want to ask you guys some some tactical, practical stuff, you know, you, you guys have been talking for a while here about like how it's, I feel like it's very easy, obviously for everyone on this call to tell people at our respective organizations, like get on the phone. We know it works. One of the things we were talking about in our previous conversation is the fact that like, not only do you, these, a lot of organizations right now have SDRs and BDRs with no call experience, they likely have SDR and BDR managers with no call experience. So sure. I want to ask executives. Yeah. So Colin, I want to ask you first, and I'll know Pete, obviously that you, you jump in as well. It's kind of like the like the watchmen, the famous comic, like who watches the watchers? <laughs> like so Colin, when you when you are having conversations with organizations who like they're like, we want to call in culture, we want to sell on the phone, but even their SDR managers, the people who are going to be in theory training, how are we approaching like anyone on the call here who might be in one of those situations, how can they get their entire organization up to speed? Like what are some of the, obviously we know role-playing and getting at bats is huge, but like when it's even managers who don't have that, how can they start? You got to get at least one person on the team that rises to the occasion and really leans in yep. to be enabled and lead, lead the charge and start to show what good looks like and be that person that, helps to develop the scripts and uh, brings other reps in to do practice sessions and role plays and refine and see what are we hearing on the phone yep. and, and refining and looking at their, you know, looking at their connect rate and, and their, their meeting rates and what, what the top objections are, what competitors come up the most often, what are your talk tracks for each competitor uh, or whether it's incumbent or someone else they're looking at. And though, though you got to practice that. And so it really does take a person and so, you know, if you're on a, if you're for those in the audience, if you're in a sales team where you really don't think you're getting much call coaching or enablement today, it could just be a kind of a, a child of the previous generation of reps that just relied on email. And that person, you can't fault them. They were able to get the quota on email or LinkedIn yeah. or other ways. But now with the need to find other channels, such as the phone, it's you have a chance to shine and reinvigorate live conversations for your sales team and floor and pure. So um, I, I would say it just takes one. And, and we do the same thing in our pilots. Like, so when, when folks trial Orem, when they pilot Orem, the, you know, we, we always look to get at least one rep really adopting and showing the rest of the team what, what good looks like and the excitement and the buzz and the production. And that catches fire. That one yeah. spark attitudes are contagious. Uh, and, and look, the opposite can come true. If everyone on the team is like a naysayer about the phone and, uh, you know, attitudes are, can be contagious. So be the person that brings the buzz to your sales floor. And like, you're, you're going to be in for a treat for your paycheck. Your peers are going to love you. You're going to help a lot of people. Uh, and your, you know, your executive team is going to, going to swiftly, uh, accelerate your, your, uh, career advancement as well. I assure you. So. Yeah. The, um, the one thing that I, I think this is actually the last webinar that I did with, with these guys, um, was, kind of like a, a bridging capacity also is um is inbound and and what i mean by that is um like a lot of organizations have a lot of inbound like have a good inbound motion like you might have content you might have i don't know like paid 
paid traffic like you know Google or or you know Meta or LinkedIn or whatever, and and like these are hand raisers, yeah. right? Um, and so just like jamming through, like being able to loop more rapidly and parallel dial inbound can be a really helpful kind of bridging behavior there. So like to use us as an example, like we know, so Atrium's kind of ideal customer profiles, organizations that have greater than 50 people in the, in the sales organization. Um, the first one is that we interact with is like, you know, sales leadership. So like VP of sales, CRO, and then like the operations enable like partner of that. So like VP of RevOps, et cetera, et cetera. So we actually do a bunch of like, um, you know, inbound offers, if you will, kind of like incentivize demos and what have you um, that like, you know, I don't know, like headphones or, or, or mugs. what have you. He- right. Yeah. Mugs, yeah, headphones. You're, yeah, you're exactly. Like, by the way. You're great. yeah, like whatever. But the thing is, is that we like, you're like, you're like, you better be, you better be sure. Like you're or like, you better be clear. Like we're asking people for their phone number there. Like they know, like, it's not a joke. Like they know that like they're signing up to like, to get called. And then what we've done is like, we've changed our inbound sequences and I, I forget who it was I think it actually was was Jack mentioned this earlier um, what we've done is we've changed our inbound sequences to be like way more call heavy which again like I, I, I remember when we first adopted Orem um, more than a year ago um, like I inspected our our um, our SDR inbound sequences and we were using what essentially are, I forget how you pronounce this, a goji sequences or, yeah. or whatever, yeah. but like, it's a very standard outbound behavior where like you, you know, you send an email, you do some LinkedIn behavior, you do like, you know, uh, you, you do like essentially it's, and it's like really, really spaced out because like it's an outbound behavior. You don't want to like, you know, spin somebody up, et cetera, et cetera. Inbound is very different. <laughs> Yes. Right. And like, where it's just like, Hey man, like this person raised their hand, like you better call them immediately and then keep calling them that day. Yeah. Like they raised their hand, like, come on, they filled the form, but then they popped into a meeting. That doesn't mean that like you're done calling them for the day when like it went voicemail when they're in the meeting, like they're, they'd be more than happy to talk to you an, an hour later when they're out of their meeting. And, and so the reason why I think a lot of organizations um, aren't as call heavy on inbound is again, that thing that assumption that like, the dialing behavior is labor intensive versus when you parallel dial, like all of a sudden it becomes like way less labor intensive. Like you can parallel, like jam through a bunch of call tasks. And so the kind of the, one of the benefits of that is then your folks who maybe haven't been as used to being on the phone. Now they're just like looping through all these, these inbound hand raisers and having good conversations with them, which then of course, then you start stacking them up with, you know, cell phone numbers for pure outbound. And now they're, you know, like they're like a, a, a fish in water, right? Yeah, you, you you nailed it. And you know, for our outbound SDRs, when you want to make the jump to account executive, we actually look at inbound as a promotion path because you know yeah. you, you you're outbound. You want your best people now talking to people that are walking into your store. Sure. They have more experience in live conversations. They're probably most versed on your script and your your product, and because you get so many more repetitions and talking live to someone in inbound, you're that much more prepared for the next jump to be an inside sales rep or account executive, right? Because you, you're starting to do more qualification and understand the different nuances there. So um, I, I'm with you there, Pete. I think inbound can be a great way to get, get the, the muscle built. If you don't currently have an outbound motion inbound, um, start calling those folks. Don't just depend on booking over email. Yeah. No. Uh, Sync is the new block. Yeah. <laughs> and if you do, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. If you do want to get going on a uh, on an outbound effort, we've got some really cool data here that oh, this is cool. we compiled. Yeah. So we got a question uh, in the Q&A that was basically, what's the best way to start cold calling? I don't know if they specifically meant like openers, which is an entirely different webinar that we could talk about for 90 minutes at least. Colin loves the keeping you busy. That's become a famous. Hey, Adam, are they keeping the, keeping you busy over there? Hey, keeping you busy over there. Um, but <laughs> once you get into it, you know, the best way to start dialing is to start dialing. And so we've got some data here that is really, really cool that we got all of this information uh, by taking a look at over 60 million calls made on our platform in 2023. So there we've had tens of millions of calls and we took a, a cohort of over 60 million of them, looked at the data. It's across 500 different companies. And this is what we found. So I want to get you guys kind of live reacts. Colin has had the benefit of seeing this a little bit, but 
we have our best time. You know, people traditionally think like, don't call at the very beginning of the day. Don't call at the very end of the day. Like, and all that stuff is a lie. We always call then. <laughs> exactly. We have found that the best time for connect rates was Monday mornings, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And then Wednesdays, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. And actually, the be- that aligns with the best time to book a meeting, not just get a connect, but the, the time people are booking the most meetings on Orem's platform is, again, Mondays, 8 to 9 a.m. in the morning. So I want to get you guys kind of like live reactions from this. Colin, I'll let you sort of start. And then, Pete, you haven't had as much time to think about these, so I'll let you guys react. But Colin, what, what's this kind of tell you? What do these numbers show you? It's, you know, I think there's probably less traffic Monday morning in terms of competing for someone's attention because yeah. most people probably view it as such sacred time and uh you mo- to to get yourself out of bed before you know that 9 a.m bell rings you're making cold calls that's already freaking heroic so you're already above board uh, uh against any other salesperson out there and then the people you're calling are likely not on the phone or in a meeting yet mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, by 8 a.m., you, you've probably got the kids off to school. So yeah. you're in this window where you're probably just looking at your week ahead or planning for that 9 a.m. meeting, and you just glance down and someone's calling your phone. You're like, oh, it's probably somebody for this week ahead. Let's see what's up. And because you're already planning the week, like I tip, you know, most look, we know superstars plan their week the week before or the night before. Most people are last minute and do it that, that morning, right? So you're catching them cold while they're planning their day or their week. And, uh, and if you have a relevant message, right, you're, you're doing your research up front, the person you're calling, you have a very specific reason you're hooking them in with, with a great opener, uh, and, uh, and, and booking, booking the meeting. So yeah, industry is going to, going to vary here. Persona is going to vary here. Mm -hmm. This is an aggregation of, of data here. So yeah, certainly there'll be some variance here for your market. Hey, Colin, I'm just going to admit, this is a cold call. Do you mind if I take five seconds to tell you why I called you specifically. Sure, Pete, uh, go for it. <laughs> go for it, Pete. Yeah, all right, fine, all right. Uh, you got me. All right, me, fine. Pete. I just yeah. dropped my kids off. You got me. Um, yeah, so um, another reason why I'm a big Orem homer is at my last uh, software company, Talent Bin, we, um, we were actually early adopters of this, this software called InsideSales.com um, that, that never, like, it was a power dialer, but not a, you know, not a, not a parallel dialer, um, because the, you know, the AI technology wasn't there to do phone tree navigation and, and et cetera, et cetera. And, um, one of the things that they talked about was how important it is like speed to lead, which is something that like when I've done, um, a session with Henry Shuck from zoom info for modern sales pros, he talks about how zoom info is like, so, 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 so focused on, on speed to lead. But also time period, like so, like speed to lead is really important because like they're raising their hand right now. You got to get on them, right? Yeah. Um, and and this is why I'm a big fan of Orem for inbound. The second thing though is like you got to follow up, and then but more importantly though, you got to follow up at the right time. And so one of the things that actually we did was we had the um, time zone on the on the contact object, right? Um, such that as we were, you know, and then we had different cues that people, that SDRs would jam through contingent on what time zone the, the person was in. And the reason why is because as you can kind of see here, the, the best connect times are, especially if you're like, if you're talking to, and this is gonna be different on a per market basis, but like, let's, let's use us as an example. So like, you know, we, we call uh, CROs and VPs of sales and, and rev ops leaders and, and so on and so forth. These are people that during the day are probably in a lot of meetings, right? They're in customer meetings, they're in internal meetings, et cetera, et cetera. But then at the edges of the day, 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m., that's when they're like doing async work, right? They're catching up on email that they, that they couldn't deal with like while they were supposed to be paying attention in meetings and so on and so forth, right? And so that's the prime time for talking to, you know, for catching a CRO or catching a CEO or catching a VP of ops or whatever. Okay, cool. So if we know that we have this golden window between like, um, you know, eight, nine, 10 and, um, you know, three, four, five, six, well then like, you know, traveling across that across the country, if you will. I'm kind of focused on the American, um, the, the American market here. 
can be really powerful because of if your conversion rates, like if your connect rates end up being like double at 5 p.m., then hitting the East Coast at 5 p.m. and then hitting Central Time at 5 p.m. and then hitting Mountain Time at 5 p.m. and then hitting Pacific Time at 5 p.m., right, um, can be very can be very powerful. Now, um, that's different on a per organization or per market basis. Like, so for instance, um, if you're calling into like SMB, like, um, gosh, um, if, if you're if you're calling, uh, you know, uh, restaurants, right? Yeah. You're calling gen general managers or, um, you know, owners of restaurants or whatever, calling them at 5 p.m. is like probably the worst possible thing you could do because it's like, you know, right, it's like dinner's about to start. They're probably like de dealing with a bunch of stuff versus like calling them like when they get into the store to like open things or what have you. So just, but like thinking about whenever that like best time might be and then following that best time across time zones can be a very powerful thing. Yeah, you, you, you nailed it, Pete. I think one one quick tip there, just look in your internal org and look at the, if, if the persona that you target exists in your internal company, look at their yep. calendar. Does totally. your CEO's calendar vary from your mm -hmm. chief revenue officer, vary from your chief technology officer? So you could look right within your own house, you know, uh, uh, for some, you know, ideas of, of ideal call blocks. So, yeah. And then to, to build on that here, I want to, we've got another slide of some additional pretty cool stats. So I want to keep talking about, you know, we were, you were both giving some really awesome best practices on how to essentially increase connect rate, which we, we've got a bunch of stuff on. So our average connect rate on the Orm platform for 2023 was 5.3%. Uh, that is across, yeah, that's, that's, and that's across all of our numbers. But we have a ton of ways on this slide that can help you increase that. Obviously, we talked about, you know, calling first thing on Monday mornings, not calling on Friday after. But the good news is if you're an SDR and you hate calling on Friday at 4.30, you, no one wants to hear from you anyway, according to our last stats. So don't so get all your stuff in early in the week. No, but, what you, you should be working on your list and setting up next week. There you go. Right. Exactly. Like Colin said. Setting um, your week ahead. Nailed it, Pete. You nailed it. Yeah. So I want to <laughs> I wanna double tap into a little bit of each of these. I, want, I would love to hear both of your thoughts on like why these things work. So in Orem, one of the things you can do is you can set up a callback number and a substantial amount of Orem users have done this. But basically what we have seen is reps with a callback number book 25% more meetings per dial than reps who don't have a callback number. It's going to sound obvious, but Colin, do you want to kind of talk through why it's so essential to have a call, like why this matters as much as it does? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, so people will call you back. I mean, it just, it does happen, right? So you Talker. want, yeah, you, you <laughs> want your number to Turns be out. Well, um, I think for, for even compliance reasons, I believe in some states you need to have a call that's, you know, reachable when, when you call out. And so um, setting up or just whether you're calling, for, I mean, if you're calling from your cell phone, of course, they can call you back. But if you're working with any kind of VoIP system, phone platform, you know, in Orem, we make it really easy for folks to call you back direct to, any call forwarding number of your choosing, or even right back onto your browser with an Orem provided phone number. Um, so yeah, you should make the call returnable and you're, and people book meetings from the callbacks because people are curious, yeah. like who called me? I got a missed call from this number. You called me twice in a row. What's the deal? What's urgent? Um, and, and so you can go right in your conversation, you know, with them when they call you back here. So. Yeah. It, um, we had a conversation in December with Kevin Dorsey and he I was laughing because he kind of says the same thing and it gets to the point about leaving a voicemail. You know, reps who leave a voicemail see a 25% increase in connections to future calls. His whole point was like, you you call, you leave a voicemail, you call the next time, you maybe you don't. You call, you leave a voicemail and finally someone's going to grab the phone and be like, what do you want? And they're going to listen. Like, I want to hear, Pete, what, Pete, what is your, what are your thoughts on leaving voicemails and kind of how do you have like what are the ways you have your team leave voicemails what's kind of the goal of them yeah i mean like so first of all the way to kind of all of these are just channels right it's just a mm -hmm. channel right and so what you want to do is you want to be multi-channel in how you talk to your customer like i was um i was talking with our marketing staff earlier today because we got a, a one of our vendors uh or to be a vendor potentially uh door dashed us some donuts today right now that's a pretty expensive channel right but like we're already in a sales cycle with them um but that's just a channel like a bunch of donuts showed up 
right? It's a channel. We were talk talking about the, the vendor. And so the th like, so voicemail is just another channel here where we can automate, right? Voicemail drops. So it's like, hey, if we're doing dials, right? And we can just like drop a voicemail with a click. Now, the like, are they necessarily going to call back from that voicemail? No, not necessarily. But again, it's like an opportunity. Like they listen to it and you hit them with a very terse thing, right? Like, um, hey, it's P from Atrium. You know, you're probably thinking about getting higher activity levels and kind of like more output through better management and accountability in your sales organization in 2024. That's what we do here at Atrium. If, uh, you know, if, if driving better, you know, better performance of your sales team through better management is something that's top of mind on your agenda for 2024, we'd love to, there's probably, there's, I, I have an email in your inbox. Just go ahead and reply to me there. Mm -hmm. Right. Like a, a voicemail like that. And like some, someone's like, okay, cool. Ignore. Or someone's like, actually, I was just in a meeting with our, v like I was just in our board meeting talking about how we needed to like, you know, raise accountability in our sales organization through better management, better data driven management. I'm so glad that this SDR dropped me a voicemail here. I'm going to go search in my inbox. Right. For that. And I think actually someone in, in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the chat mentioned this earlier is like voicemails are great. Yeah. Someone might call back if you have a callback number, maybe they won't. They probably won't, right? Um, but what they what it can do is it can drive a response yes. to that email conversation. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that email, that email thread. Like, oh yeah, that is top of mind. I've been ignoring this email thread right here that's automatically being sent to me via outreach. But now I'm gonna Google, I'm gonna Google, I'm gonna search in my Gmail for Atrium and then reply back there. It's very common behavior. So you, yeah, you know, you know that Pete, right? If your voicemail is alluding to the other channels that you've been reaching out to them, hey, I just sent, I just sent you a LinkedIn connection. Hey, I just sent you an email with, with a case study. No need to call me back. You, you can reply to the email if it's relevant. I have a calendar link in there. You can, and, and what this does. And by the way, uh, we Adam, this came up in one of our other talks. But think about everyone in the room. Like, what's your open rate on voicemails? It's mm -hmm. got to be ninety percent plus. Everybody at minimum looks at the yeah. transcription you look at well who left yeah, me a now yep. and and now with transcriptions on smartphones and even business lines will transcribe it if you have like a an eight by eight, like a different you know most voicemail systems will transcribe it for you so mm -hmm. you don't even need to listen to the whole thing and i think jessica wrote in the comments i think that was jessica uh yeah jennifer sorry jennifer just scrolling back up jennifer mentioned good name recognition you're gonna totally. have it transcribed uh the person's name and now you're going to go search them in the email inbox or you'll see their LinkedIn in your queue of people to add or reject. And uh, it, it's, again, it's one more touch point. You're reducing uncertainty about who you are, why you're calling. So. Yeah. yeah it's as a, as a marketer, you know, I was thinking about like nurture and drip campaigns. And I, I think about every single touch point in a sequence that uh, uh, AE and SDR, BDR, whoever it is, is leaving, it's an opportunity to drop more information. So exactly like everyone is so worried about voicemail transcription being like, it's going to ruin voicemail. It's like, no, actually it's, it's incredible. Like, it's giving people an opportunity to get more information and to, you know, like you said, get that name recognition. And then, you know, the other thing we have is, you know, be, strate be strategic with who you call. Obviously we, you know, with Orem, we have our power, we have our parallel dialing tools, we have our strategic calling as well. So no matter how fast or quote unquote slower you want to call, you can do that. But we have a feature called hot numbers, which basically what it shows is over, you know, the millions and millions and millions of calls that have been made through our platform over the years, we have data that shows who's likely to pick up. And so again, I, I mentioned our average pickup rate is 5.3%. And if you are using Aurum, you'll go in there and as you're making your dials, you'll see this little flame emoji next to a quote unquote hot number. The average pickup rate since we've launched this uh, in the in Q3 is 22%. And it's actually, it hits times when there's like 35 to 40%. Our hot numbers connect rates have gotten to such percentages that like it almost as a marketer doesn't feel right to put it out into the world. Like it's it's just understanding having all of these tools where you know, okay, I'm going to dial a bunch of hot numbers. And that means over the course of an hour, instead of having five conversations, I'm going to have 15. And then that gets back to what we were talking about earlier is like the more at-bats you can have, the more times you can make that opener, you can handle those objections, you can understand. And so it is, it's just being strategic with, with who you call. And then I want to talk a little bit about call blitzes in a moment here because we had a question 
uh, that came in from our Q&A that somebody basically asked, how does Orem help with morale? Feeling ready to go outbound can be such a mental game. And so I'm not trying to make this an Orem commercial, but we have a a part of our platform called the sales floor. And it is a virtual place where your people can dial together. It's incredible. It's it's a virtual sales floor. It's where people can make calls. They can listen into one another's calls. They can get coaching in real time from their reps or from their managers, from one another. They can you know celebrate big wins. They can laugh at big rejections. It's motivational and it really reduces that call hesitancy. So I would love to hear from you guys, how often should managers be planning call blitzes and call reviews? Kind of take me through that process for both you, uh, Pete, I'll let you, you go first. Um, well, I mean, I think the way that I, I'm a big operating rhythm guy um, where we, we have this saying in, at Atrium, uh, calendar is destiny um, and, and what what essentially that means is like um, like what you put on the calendar actually happens, right? And so that includes things like call blitzes or prospecting time. Like a, a really great example of this would be MongoDB was famous for um, P, what is it PG Tuesdays? PG Tuesdays. You know what do you do on Tuesday? We do we do pipe gen. Oh yeah, yeah. And the reason why is because it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to get to my pipe gen. I'm going to get to my prospecting time, says the AE, who then like calendars time over on Tuesday and then, and then like, oh, whoopsie daisy, it's Friday and I haven't done any prospecting. And then the next week and the next week. And I think the same thing applies to th- anything that's like, you know, um, that that people are maybe hesitant to, to do. We see this with respect to like, you know, managers managing reps by by goals by leading indicators and things like that which is what atrium is really focused on is if you weave the behavior into an operating rhythm like you've got your one-on-one where you look at your progress on your goals you know last week's goals activity goals for um you know for uh last week's activity goals and like the month in the month in progress goal for like pipeline generation or pipeline advancement and and so on and so forth and i think the same thing applies to like prospecting stuff where it's just like hey you have call blocks you adhere to them right it's like all right everybody get on the like here we are get on the floor right etc cetera, etc cetera. we only have a couple sdrs and so they they just like I think they like Slack huddle each other or what have you. I'm, I'm not sure if they, they use the, the, cause like we just don't have that many. Um, but like the notion of like, all right, everybody in the pool, it's time to go, right. can be a very powerful, powerful thing. And that's like what like the call blitzing and kind of like the sales floor functionality facilitates. Yeah. Look, it's sales is such a mind game as, as much as we're talking about connect rate and activity and, and everything, here, but, but certainly, I mean, even before an AE discovery call, whether it's a cold call or a discovery call, sometimes you just got, you got to get yourself in the zone and um, you know, and, and, and do what, what serves you to get you in the game. And that could be a, a breathing exercise that could be watching uh, you know, an inspiring video in Orem. We do serve up sales collateral and content and videos um, uh, to the reps, um, especially after we see a trend of objection that you're running into, we'll show you some content to enable the rep on that specific objection, like ways to handle, I'm walking into a meeting. I'm not interested. I already have a a, a vendor here. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think for us, oftentimes it's just, it's practicing too, or it's listening to a recording of yourself from past calls where you had a really successful outcome that especially helps if you're running into you know, kind of a, a valley of performance, if you will. And you're trying to pick yourself back up, listening to times where you freaking slayed the dragon on the phone and crushed it. <laughs> uh, yeah, always helps boost up your, uh, your spirit. So, yeah. Especially with that, that data that we saw about people in the beginning, like dialing from eight to 9am on Mondays, like you book a meeting at eight 30 in the morning on Monday, what better like mental motivation. Oh, yeah. to be like, you're oh, have man, a good week. Awesome. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, everyone, I want to let you all know, I just put through uh, a quick poll. If you're interested in a demo, obviously we don't want to like spam people who are not interested. So if you're interested, hit yes, we will send you a message there. And then we were talking, you know, Colin was just talking about positivity there. Uh, I put one more thing here in the chat on February 7th, we are doing what we're calling Scorum, which is Orum's virtual SKO. It is a first of its kind, you know, 
series of sessions with some really incredible people. Uh, we've got four different events going on that day that you can join completely for free. You are welcome to join any and all of them. Uh, we are all about focusing on a positive mind shift mindset in 2024. So we hope you'll you'll join us there. Again, it's completely free. There's some really amazing stuff going on there. Um, uh, we got, it uh, looks like we have maybe one more question here. I want to ask you both. Uh, sorry for the basic product question, but as a first time founder who is diving in the wonderful world of B2B outbound sales for the first time with a small team, Orem dials multiple numbers at once, parallel calling. How does that work if multiple numbers pick up simultaneously? I am so glad you asked this because as all the time, Colin, I'm going to let you answer. What happens <laughs> if people are to pick up at the same time? You get to book two meetings, right? It's yeah, what, a, what a blessing. You got two people to pick up at the same time uh, uh, uh. and you're, you're double the double the pipeline there. It, it, it doesn't happen on the Orem platform. So down to the millisecond, we will connect you to the first person and the way we've evolved Orem is when you have a higher pickup rate list, a higher connect rate list is where the hot numbers comes in that Adam was alluding to with Orem. You might, you might click to call or, or single power call. We call it power dialing. When you call one person at a time, it's one live call. Parallel dialing is really where, when you have, we call it a low connect rate. We call low uh, in the single digits, right? And that's where it, it only makes sense to parallel call because the the likelihood of someone answering the phone is one out of 10 or one out of 20 or one out of 50. Yeah. Um, so uh, really your, your connect rate helps to drive when to do a parallel dial or not. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Well, uh, I really, really appreciate Colin, Pete, both of you coming on. It's You make moderating panels like this very easy because I don't have to do very much work. You both are so <laughs> talented and, and you know, incredible at this so thank you everybody for joining uh again we will send a follow-up email with the recording if you want to send share this with your teams please do we look forward to it uh and most importantly we look forward to hearing about all your guys successes cold calling in the future if you have anything you, you want to ask us please send us emails shoot us messages on linkedin um thank you everybody really appreciate it thank you guys happy new year make it the best yet cheers okay, later guys